Hello everyone, welcome back to the Junior Developer channel. My name is Rubesh and today we're going to talk about GitHub Copilot. So GitHub Copilot was introduced a few weeks ago and I was fortunate enough to get the access last night. So today I decided to, you know, play around with it and figure out if it's actually uh, helping me in, you know, doing all the things that it promises. So as you can see, it says your AI peer programmer, which is pretty, pretty good. Like that's, that's exactly what it was. Um, of course, if you are not in the tech industry and you have not heard about GitHub Copilot, you should definitely go to this URL and check it out. Uh, if I have to explain in a really layman's term, it's basically an autocomplete, but for your code, right? It's similar to how we type on Google on the search box and it auto completes our text or maybe when we are texting on our smartphones that's exactly but by code and it literally blew my mind to be honest in uh somewhere or other uh, i spent close to you know six to eight hours today coding along with it so the the best part about it was uh not not when you write out comment and it tries to bring about a function right that's that's something that does not really uh excites me as per se what excites me is when i'm into the deep work mode and when i'm putting it out and it starts suggesting the next line or maybe something after it on its own so it, it literally feels like some like uh you know the ai has got into your mind and they know what the next step would be what next step you are anticipating and that's how they come up with these suggestions which is pretty mind-blowing um when this got introduced a few weeks back everyone in the industry lost their mind that this is the beginning where uh you know companies start having all this kind of ai pair programmers and removing all the coders uh, and it will make us all go jobless but i don't really see that happening because at least for the time being it's it's not really that matured of a product uh if if you have to replace this uh with any other thing it will absolutely be stack overflow where you can search it out and do it on your own but it just brings all those things inside your editor so that's that's exactly what it does um you can of course add comment or you can keep on writing uh and it will try to suggest you what the next line would be so um let's let's go ahead and maybe you know build one app uh a small counter maybe and you know try it out in action so um let me just go to create react app and this is my terminal so i can just do get a copilot so I will let it scaffold. We'll try to build a small, really small counter just to see it in action. And maybe once you get the access, you can try out on maybe your side project, which is much bigger or maybe also in your work, whatever works out for you, right? So I think it's close to being done. All right, so I can just do this. Uh, oh wait, I also have to open my code editor. All right, cool. And then I can, okay, it's already inside. Let's just do the on start. Um, all right. Yeah, this looks good. Um, and Okay, why am I not getting it? 
maybe I can get it here. Oh yeah, here it goes. So um, this is the current integration which we have. I believe right now we just have the integration with uh, VS Code, and it's it's basically private right now. It's invite only. So yeah, it has got all the starter guide, or and and also has a preview, um, which is I believe private as well where it gives you some information on how you can, you know, figure out uh, installing it and doing everything. Oh, I see you can also join the waitlist from VS Code itself, not rather than going to here, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, so cool. So this is how our React app looks right now. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove all of this and I'm gonna build a counter component. Um, and of course, it's gonna keep on shouting because counter I have not imported yet. And I can just create a new file here, counter.js. And I can import React. Now you can see that this kind of autocomplete, which is pretty basic, it might sound, but once you go more complex, like for example this, usually when you code in React, you might expect some, maybe a prop type check or some level of static check in place. So it starts, so prop ties is of course the obvious one because I believe it comes with the CRA. Okay, it does not. I don't know why it's testing them. But yeah, so we can just build a counter component. Uh, and it keeps on, uh, you know, assuming stuff, but we're gonna go ahead and ignore that for now. Let me just export this, yeah, quickly. And I would want to return. Okay, okay, counter. So yeah. So some of these suggestions, of course, won't make sense. For example, this is a functional component, but React is, uh, sorry, not React, uh, Cobalt is suggesting in this .state count, which is uh, specifically for, um, it gives other solutions as well. Uh, so which is specifically for class-based components, let me see if we have some paper class space. Okay, not nothing yet. That's fine. Um, let me just import use state from here. Um, and maybe let me create a button here. We'll need two buttons. Okay, and click. It's providing some time. Uh, but wait, let me see if I could get more service chance here. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit <laughs> messed up here, but we can figure that out. And apparently, oh wait, it's trying to, oh, that's completely incorrect. Um, Let's see some other suggestions. So it's trying to declare the hook inside of onclick, which is completely incorrect. Um, well, this this might have worked out. It, it would have been a class-based component. No, 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 no luck. So let me just maybe, uh, okay, I'm guessing. So now let me see if it, okay, now it's providing me, but let me see what are the solutions that have it place. Okay, yeah. This is exactly what we need. It's just using a p tag here. It's using a span here. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, just the invitation details. So as you can see, there are <laughs> so many ways you can create a counter. Like in this case, it's assuming maybe I just want to do it for add one and not for subtract. So I'm gonna maybe go ahead and accept this solution. Okay, it again messes up all of this. And I believe this should work out fine. And voila. Yeah, awesome. So as you can see here that uh, this was just a really small example where you can try to create a whole component out of it. But I've seen examples where if you want to write maybe integration test or unit test uh, for a function or for your component, it tries to help you out with it as well. But as a, as a consumer, how, it, how I personally see it evolving is I should not like it should not let me go to the stack overflow at all. It should have all the options in place. And of course, as we go forward, this particular model will become more self-sufficient uh, after getting all the data. So, so for example, here we got 10 suggestions, right? The one which uh, all the users would choose the most would basically be the most apt one. So uh, it, it, it's learning from that as well. But I think the ultimate aim would be to replace Stack Overflow and have everything in here, which is a really passionate goal. But let's see how it evolves. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining in. Please hit the subscribe button. Um, this, this is what keeps all the you know content creators going. I'll see you some other time. All the best and stay safe. Bye, everyone.